One of the first things people see on your website is a little blurb saying the system makes it hard for independent artists. So what are some things you've seen artists struggle with? Okay. Um, I think, you know, at a macro level, they, they, they struggle making a living. If they're, mm -hmm. if they're trying to be a, a career musician, you know, it's, it is tough out there and has got a lot tougher in these sort of pandemic circumstances. David Andrew Weave here with the New Music Industry Podcast. Very quickly, I'll get into what's new this week. I don't have a whole lot to share with you. I have been getting a little bit more rest than usual because I've been feeling a little tired out, and that's been the case since leaving Calgary, so since I got back to Abbotsford. But it has been timely in the sense that I've had a little bit more time to myself to be able to do that which is really important and I can kind of regroup and get it back at the things that are important so I still do some pretty high impact work every single day I just don't burn myself out by working 10 hours at a time but I'm pretty sure I'm on a path recovery it's not like my health is suffering I'm doing okay I'm just needing probably a little bit more rest to get back to my usual self also you know I'm enjoying the scenery and weather out here more than ever i'm really appreciating it more than i ever have and even though i was like yeah six months in abbotsford kind of felt like enough the city kind of seems to come alive in the summer so i get to see it in a new way that i've never really seen it before and i'm discovering parts of the city i'd never seen before so much scenery so many amazing roads that you can drive on so i'm enjoying that a lot more and I think that's really a great spot to be in. doesn't mean that I'm not going to be moving around when that's possible again. I'm not sure when or how that's going to be possible. But for the time being, I'm finding it a great place to be. That's about all I have to share right now. But most of what's new this week is going to be covered in the updates later in closing. So I'll share more there. To get into today's topic, we're going to be looking at a tool you should be using as a musician if you aren't already using it but you may not even know about it yet because it's still kind of in development. Now I admit, I went and tried it out as the interview for this episode was progressing and was pleasantly surprised to find what's available. Now I would have done this before the interview, I would have went and tried it. It's just that it didn't occur to me to be able to do that and whether it would have any use for me, but it does. So I don't think it interrupts the flow of the conversation either way, so that's good. Anyway, why don't we get into that interview? Today I'm chatting with Beat Chain founder Ben Mendoza. How are you today, Ben? I'm very well, thank you, David. Thank you for having yeah. me on the show. Oh yeah, thanks for coming on. And you know, for better or for worse, this has become a bit of a compulsory question in the last few months. But how have you been holding up during the pandemic? Um, yes, we're very well, really. And, and luckily, because we're, you know, at Beat Chain, we're basically a tech company. Um, guys can all work from home. Uh, pretty easily and you know have uh, have good meetings on on conferencing systems and so on so it, you know it, it's not the same as being in the same office of course but uh, you know we are, are managing to get on and sort of crack on with the development work that we do yeah for me as well you know i can't say that my daily life has changed a whole lot certainly i usually like to go out and uh, explore local restaurants and, and enjoy food. I'm, I'm a big foodie. <laughs> haven't really been able to do that in the capacity I usually do. But aside from that, I think uh, kind of kind of been lucky to be able to stay home and do the work and yes, write right. books and so forth. So, yeah. Been doing a lot of home cooking. Which That's right. <laughs> Something I've been doing for a long time. Yeah, and that can be that can be super healthy too. So that's great. You can one of the first things people see on your website is a little blurb saying the system makes it hard for independent artists. So what are some things you've seen artists struggle with? Okay. Um, I think, you know, at a macro level, they, they, they struggle making a living. If they're, mm -hmm. if they're trying to be a, a career musician, you know, it's, it is tough out there and it's got a lot tougher in these sort of pandemic circumstances. You know, we were, we were talking just, you know, just 10 weeks ago, whenever it was about how 
probably 80% or more of the income for most of the artists we were working with came from live performance. And, you know, that's basically evaporated. And so we, we now have to look at other ways in which we can help, help independent artists and all artists to, to, to be able to make ends meet and uh, be as creative as they can at the same time, but, uh, you know, come up with interesting new innovative, innovative ways of um, building their audience and, and, you know, growing engagement and getting to a point where hopefully they can get income from other other methods. Absolutely. And I think there's been a certain amount of synergy in, in my work since I've always been talking a lot about digital marketing and monetization models that people are still able to glean a lot from my work without uh, getting too heavily into the live performance side of things. My first book definitely covers a lot of uh, live performance just because it was written about five years ago or five or six years ago but my more recent ones have certainly focused on what is a real challenge for musicians it's often this whole marketing business that uh, doesn't get taught in in school come (laughs) fresh out of school knowing how to compose and and make great music and being able to play your instrument and then not knowing the first thing about how to proceed from there uh, just because there's it's every path is independent Absolutely. And, and the other thing that, you know, people don't realize is, is necessarily how the music industry is going to work and how yeah. they're going to be treated by the people they meet and, you know, what to do and what not to do in terms of giving away rights and licenses and other things that, you know, many people fall, fall down because they, you know, they're so excited about being offered some sort of deal somewhere that they don't realize uh, quite what it means, uh, you know, what's in the small print. And so, you know, what we've, uh, what we've been saying at Beat Chain is, is for a long time that the way that the, the system, is, if you like, as we've called it, which really refers to the, the old ways of working or the traditional ways of working in music mm. industry sort of 1.0, don't really apply anymore uh, or shouldn't really apply anymore anyway. And there are ways in which, you know, DIY artists and creators can be successful if they have the right tools to help them along their journey. It can be very, it can be quite a complex set of tools, actually. Um, the, yeah. But to, you know, what we've tried to do at Beat Chain is is put all the sort of necessary components into one platform and make it available at a you know, at a price point, which is either completely free because you can get to a lot of it just on our basic free level for uh, just by signing up. But, you know, if you want to go that step further, then even that is, you know, I sort of liken it to, it's like the cost of one pizza a month or something (laughs) to use all the tools that if you used individually, and I know you've talked about some of this in some of your other work, but, uh, you know, because there's some great tools out there. There's, you know, yes. uh, um, tools like, uh, you know, Buffer uh, and, um, you know, on, on, on the website side, like, you know, Wix and Squarespace and, you know, and so on. There's, there's loads of really good tools, but, but, but many of them were um, sort of designed for the enterprise world rather than the individual. And a lot of people find they're paying quite a lot of money uh, to have access to these tools and then only use a very small percentage of their capability. Yeah. Um, so what we've tried to do at a beat chain was to look carefully at what you need as a independent artist and, and say, okay, well, you know, you need the best bits of a hoot suite. You need the best bits of a, a web designer and a distribution system and so on and say, well, you know, we can bring those together. We can, we, we can develop a solution where we can put all that together and, and, and make it available at a you know affordable point price point because I know so many great musicians you know super talented guys that are still having to work you know two or three other jobs to make ends meet they're not making the making money out of their out of their sort of chosen career and um, anything we can do to help them you know get more of the sort of revenue from from their efforts is is what we're trying to do oh yeah i mean there's so much i could offer by 
by way of comment there, but even as, uh, I guess, a music coach or music educator, I don't know if it's been any easier. It's always been a thing of uh, hustle and grind and making sure the lead generation is working. And then once the lead generation is working, making sure the right messages are reaching the right people at the right time and then making sure that they see the offers when when they're created and making sure those offers lead to other offers that are related and things people want so yeah it's it's really is a step-by-step thing and when you consider all the tools like i would love to say i could just use one two tool but Oftentimes it's, oh, I got to go into repurpose IO to split my podcast into snippets. And then those yeah. snippets are scheduled using Buffer or Meet Edgar. And then, yeah, it, it ends up being a very convoluted thing. Like you say, you're not leveraging the full capacity of those tools oftentimes, but still paying something for them. No, so, exactly. So, you know, what the, a really important thing for us as well is understanding how the data points join, you know, can, can be can be joined together. I mean, my background, um, and maybe I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how BeatChain came about because sure. that will that, that will sort of help, I think. But, um, you know, for the last 25 years, I've run a very big uh, tech company called MDSL, uh, which I founded back in 95. You know, we supplied enterprise-level technology that managed very big data systems for you know, the world's largest companies. So our, our customers were people like Apple and Facebook and Uber and, you know, those sorts mm. of things. So we, we were used to working with very big data. However, you know, before that, if I really really go back, I left school at uh, 16 to join a rock band, <laughs> much to the uh, shock of my family, um, and uh, did that for a few years. But, you know, it wasn't, it, it, you know, I'd, I'd love to have been the next Jimmy Page or the next... Uh, Richard Blackmore or whatever, but it, it, that wasn't likewise. <laughs> that that wasn't <laughs> be for me, uh, so I, I ended up getting into tech and and, and doing a whole bunch of other things. Um, but as as I got to the end of my sort of role at MDSL, I m- met a, a musician called Steve Jones, who fantastic, um, fantastically talented guy, very good producer, um, and. He was crowdfunding to, you know, raise money to produce the second album for his band, a band called Brother Strut, who were a sort of funk and soul band, really good, really good band. Um, mm. And I got to meet him because we actually paid for them to come to one of our events. This was one of the things over crowdfunding, um, and uh, you know, play at one of our events. And, and after the gig, we sat down and talked together, and. Um, he explained to me how he had lived through sort of music industry 1.0. He's had record deals, you know, he's been a musician you know, most of his life um, and had become disillusioned by it, wasn't able to make a living. The proportion of funds that actually came out to him was, was, was trivial compared with what was being taken by, you know, the, the label and the, and the managers and the promoters and all the other layers that was in between. He's a very smart guy and had put himself on a whole bunch of marketing um, and social media courses and realized that when he formed uh, his band Brother Strut, he he could do better by going out there and doing it himself. And so he's explained to me that uh, this is what he'd done. And, he, you know, this was in the early days of Facebook advertising and so on. And he had been very successful. He'd, he'd built up a, an engaged audience and was, was selling his own merch and selling his own tickets. And he's sort of hiring venues where he could and you know, putting on his own shows and keeping the majority of the fees. Um, however, what came out of it was that it was taking all his time. He was spending so much of his day monitoring all these activities that it, it, it he found it really hard to be creative at the same time yeah and um so this is when it, it, it just sort of clicked between us and we, i was talking to him and said, well, you know from a technology point of view this is where i come come from from the tech side you know i've got a team of guys who could look at what he was doing and say well let's let's dissect that a little bit let's look at that and say you know what can we automate um which pieces can we um, join together so that we can 
take the data from all, each of these different activities and, and, and bring it into one place. Because what I found in the, the experience I had in, in, of the music industry is that data seems to be traditionally very siloed. So, you know, the labels keep their data. They don't share it with management. You don't share it with the ticket people. You know, they all have information about the audiences, but they don't share any of it. You know, if you can be, be reaching out and touching each of these touch points, you can bring that data together and see a much more holistic picture of who your audience is, where they are, what they like, and and so on and so forth. And this is what we we tried to do. So we worked with Steve, who became you know a sort of co-founder of uh, uh, of Beat Chain. Uh, he's now gone back off. He's now in Thailand at um, Karma Studios, uh, working out mm-hmm. there. But um, we still we still talk regularly, and he's, 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 he still uses the tools and technology, and is, is sort of a case study for us. But um, what we were able to do was was look at all those individual pieces and, and, and pull them together because you know we, we were talking about um, a number of different areas. So you know, obviously, there's social uh, managing that. There's there's mailing lists, which you talked about uh, just recently. You know, merchandising, ticketing, web hosting, link shares, analytics, distribution. There's so many different areas that you've got to think about and, and, and different systems that you'd need to be able to log on to and understand. It's it's hard to expect most musicians to become that expert in the you know the depths of Facebook advertising. It's it's, it's quite a complex world in there. No doubt. Um, so we thought, well, you know, what we tried to do is say, well, okay, well, why can't we abstract that complexity away by a level and, and, and put together a system that is, you know, it's, it's not, not meant to sort of dumb down what it does, but it's just trying to make the interface easier and bring that data together and show the power of, you know, what that means when you when you can see all that data in one in one place. I don't know whether you've taken the time to log on to BeatChain at all. Um, but yeah. I would love to. Uh, well, you can just you know just sign up. I mean, you don't have to sign up. Uh, it doesn't cost anything for you to oh, okay. come in and, 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 and put your details in and, and see. And immediately you will see all your data in one place. Mm. That, for many people, is a revelation. They've never seen that picture before. You know, we're tracking, I think it's like, uh, at the moment, 2.1 million playlists. Okay? So... You know, people don't realise they're being playlisted on a number of these. The, these, these mm. um, you know, we, we track sort of 115,000 artists. We've got about 50,000 artists signed up to to actually onboarded on the platform now. So we're getting a, a good amount of data uh, to work with. And you know, we, we, it's interesting that you can get some actionable insight from this data. So. A lot of people say, well, okay, well, I've now logged on, you know, what do I do next? I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what could I post and so on? And, and what you can do on BeatChain is you can look at similar artists. So we automatically mm. show who your similar artists are. Now, just because you play songs in the style of Ed Sheeran, let's say, doesn't mean to say your similar artist is Ed Sheeran, because obviously what he can do and 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 the scale of his operation is completely different to the scale of yours. But there are other artists like you that play in that style or in that genre. So we can we can compare you with similar artists of a similar size and show you what's working for them. Um, and what's really important, I think, overall, is teaching um, artists sort of through this sort of example-led uh, system how to build engagement with fans because you know what i what i've seen a lot in in uh, and have spoken to a number of artists now is that they say well you know we saved all our money up and we made this um sort of really good glossy video uh, uh, you know of our track and we put it out there but nothing happened yeah and 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 you know we were really disappointed we spent all our money and we say well well that is that really a surprise in a way if you haven't told anybody and you haven't built up any sort of following um, 
and engage with a fan base that's then going to look at it and stream it. It's, you know, it's the same with distribution. A lot of people think, oh, I must distribute, must get my songs on Spotify and Deezer and everywhere else. But it's really important that they understand the interactions with a fan base and what engagement means. And engagement is more than just somebody liking a post that you put out there. It's, you know, it, it, it's a two-way conversation. Uh, it's um, also looking at the sentiment of that, that com- of that conversation as well to make sure that, you know, it's positive and not negative. But um, it's taking all these things together and giving you this sort of toolkit that uh, allows you to do all the things that you need to do, I think, is a real step forward for many of the artists that have, uh, that have onboarded with, with Big Chain. I really love what you just shared, and this is the right podcast to share all that on, including your story. Uh, that the last five, ten minutes or whatever it was is absolutely perfect. And I just, full disclosure to listeners, I just logged in and it instantly connected my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify. I don't have a TikTok, but I could have. <laughs> it's showing me my latest uh, posts and which ones are, are doing well. Like, this is incredible. Now, I don't have a major following as as an artist. It's just not how I built my career. I have lots of little followings across many platforms, and that's mm-hmm. how things have, have worked for me. But so cool. Uh, I, I mean, this is data. I mean, I've been in this game for quite a while, so it's data that I can easily act on. But yeah. uh, f- even for those who don't know, I'm sure they could review this and learn a little bit more and and work with it to grow yeah, their following. Yeah, absolutely. It's completely free to use. You know, if you that we do have um, sort of a premium and a superstar level that gives you access to more things where there is a, where there is a charge. Um, but, you know, you can do so many things. If you're, if you're a beginning, you're a bedroom artist, if you like, for want of a better term, <laughs> um, then you've got nothing to lose by going here and you've got a lot to gain and a lot to learn. And Agreed. You know, what we're trying to do is be a service, provide provide these tools and sort of level the playing field a little bit because it used to be, you know, you got access to promotion and, and, and a budget for placing ads and doing all this sort of thing, you know, only if you got signed. Uh, yes. And we've actually found and we've spoken to a, a number of uh, uh, both independent and major labels now, and we're we're, we're on go- having that conversation. You know, we we absolutely are not fighting labels. You know, we don't think the big guys are, are, are bad or evil, or it's the dark side or anything like that. There will come a time for most artists when they will need a big label, and hmm. and and that's fine. What we're trying to do is give them the tools to get there. You're much more interesting to a label if you've generated a following of 250,000 fans that want to know where you're playing next. Absolutely. Then if you just send them a demo desk, you know, uh, so we, tr- we're, we're trying to help people nurture that, that their audience, find their audience, understand where they are, uh, you know, on the map as well. If you've logged on, you'll see that if you scroll down, you'll see a map of where your followers are and your fans are. If you've got, if you've got uh, stuff you've distributed out on uh, on Spotify, for example, or if you you know if you can track your Facebook where your Facebook fans are and everything else, and that's that's really important as well. Because if you're going to do a little tour, it's good to go where the, you know near where the people that like you are, uh, and, and you can you know plan that much more successfully based on the data rather than a guess. Yeah, this is crazy because I'm seeing exactly which cities yeah. the listeners are in. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty cool what we can do. Um, and that's, if you like, the power of having people that come from a technology background. So so all the guys that – well, a number of the guys that worked for me did work for me in the in the old company at some point. Um, I sort of put a, put a team together. Um, you know, they – they can they, they can run up software very very quickly and, and and they can make it work and and they can make it scale which is really important so it, you know it doesn't matter who you you know uh, who you are how big you are where you are in the world you can put your information in and, and B Chain will find you and you know it happens within seconds of you typing in your your information as you've just seen so. Mm. Uh, 
what we've also got in the company are a number of people now that um, come from the music industry as well and have had that background because you've got to understand what it is you're, you're, you're working with. So we're very lucky to have some great contacts. We work very closely with a number of, um, you know, fairly well-known people in the industry as well. So one of our big, um, advi- if you like, let's say, well, we call him an advisor or just a close friend, but uh, Alan Kovac, who, who manages Better Noise Music, I, I don't know if you know him, uh, but uh, he's been he's been wonderful in terms of you know, giving us helpful advice, and we've been working with a number of his artists um, on the Beat Chain platform. Uh, we've got a guy called Cliff Leway, who uh, um, is a really well connected um, sort of legal guy uh, in in mm-hmm. the UK that, that that knows everybody in the UK music industry, and again has 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 been really helpful to us in terms of putting us in front of the right people and, and getting us the feedback we need so that we can tune this this solution to get it to a point where it's now going into production. And so, you know, just to, just to give you a, 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 a little bit more background on, on where we are with the development, um, we sort of announced the BeatChain platform at the beginning of 2020 as, as, as being available um, and, and started a bit of a campaign and now... Uh, we're about to release um, a piece of tech which is called Fan Builder. Mm-hmm. And as the name suggests, the idea of that is how do I go and find new fans? And, and how, do I, you know, how do I generate engagement? How do, what's the best way of using the tools to do that? And this is actually, this is actually a paid service. You, you, you get access to it through, through the premium or the, or the superstar level. But um, what it does is it puts a front end on, on Facebook's ad manager. So effectively what we do is we just ask a few sort of wizard-like questions in terms of, you know, what media is it you want to put out there? What is the message? And we, we have, it's, it's sort of goal-based so you can say, you know, what is it you want to do? Are, are you releasing an EP? Are you planning a tour? Are you just wanting to find new fans? And it'll take you through the appropriate steps of what sort of media, what sort of content you need. And it will automatically, um, it will ask you to say, well, how much do you want to spend on the adverts? Um, and that might be something like, you know, a few dollars a week. It doesn't have to be hundreds of dollars. Um, hmm. What it then does is it automatically creates all the ad sets in the background. And so you can go to your Facebook manager and, 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 and see what it's doing. But for most people who don't want to get involved in that, they, they don't necessarily understand all the idiosyncrasies of these sorts of tools. So, you know, getting the balance of... of text to graphics right this sort of thing to, to give you the you know the optimal um, distribution of your of your ad automatically creating lookalike audiences based on your data that we've collected in the rest of the system uh, using the media library for the, for you to store and create the content that's going to go into those adverts and it does it all automatically for you so it'll just start creating the ads and creating the campaign for you uh, showing you great feedback on on how that's going and what sort of return on, on the investment you're getting from 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 posting those ads without you having to be an expert in marketing and using Facebook's ad model. And of course, they're going out on Instagram because Instagram's actually a, a much more popular platform for, for for music discovery than Facebook is these days. And obviously, yes. TikTok is you know, is picking up in, in, in those areas, and they've just started uh, uh, to allow advertising as well. So we'll be introducing that in the fullness of time. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about this because I think this is really going to be a differentiator, if you like, in in, in the marketplace. And anybody else is is really doing this or understands how to do it, in, uh, as well as the guys I have do. Um, you know, we've got some great data scientists. There's all sorts of stuff that's going on behind the scenes that actually the artist doesn't care about. 
the audience doesn't care if we use the, you know, <laughs> the so true machine learning or artificial intelligence. You know, they're all great buzzwords, and and we are using bits of each of these things, but really they don't care. What they care about is the outcome. If I put my hard-earned dollars into this, am I going to get, you know, the responses that I that I hope for? Uh, and you know what we can basically say is you'll get the best possible responses that you would get from your content. Now we can't make you a brilliant musician, and if you, you know, if you're bashing, yeah. you know, a barn door with a banjo, then you, you know I don't think you're going to find that <laughs> many followers. But you know if you've got good music and and you know you've got good music and you've already got good fans, this will help you find new audiences because we understand the data, we understand. Who else likes what you do? And we're also introducing a lot of affinity data as well. We will be as we as we carry on. So as we learn more about the audience and what they like to do, um, we had a, a beatbox band is a good example of this. Who a great bunch of guys who we work with here in the UK, a band called Duke, uh, and um, we helped them put on a few. They'd never headlined their own shows before. They'd always been support acts. So, you know, they work with Beat Chain and we helped them to generate an audience and sort of advertise that they were they, they were going to be, um, you know, playing these events. This was actually towards the end of last year. Hmm. Uh, and um, what we noticed was that their audience also had great affinity for pimping cars, yeah. Hmm. The sorts of people that went to the, you know, cause you can tell the sort of demographic you're getting back. The people that like this type of music tend to be male between 18 and 35. They were really into sort of car modding and doing this other stuff. And it was right. amazing to see the data come to life. When we actually went to the show, all these cars with sort of um, fluorescent lighting underneath all turned up, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was amazing to see it. But by understanding that, there's an affinity of this type of this type of fan to your music means that we can use some of these extra edges in the way we put out your advertising so that we can mm. sort of target it to the right sort of groups so that it, it you know chances are people that like this sort of thing will also like your music and may not have heard of you before and they will now listen or now stream some music and so on so this is the way we sort of approach it. Yeah, you've spoken brilliantly to a lot of things that I wanted to touch on today. So that's Sorry, incredible. You have, to, <laughs> you have to shut me up, I'm afraid, because I'm I get very, no. very, very sort of passionate about it. No, I, I think it's good. You you did my work for me a little bit, but I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I can't. I can't touch on everything you just said, but one of the things that uh, I wanted to just call back for a second was the fact that artists do get caught up in uh, a lot of shiny object syndrome. And I get it. You know, there's so many people, there's experts out there really preaching and driving this stuff, but they're saying you got to pitch to playlists. You got to optimize your ad copy. You got to build sales funnels from scratch. And more often than not, I just encourage musicians, unless they already have a sound, they already have a brand, they already have their skills and chops together, to really just work on their music. And then you can market something. You yeah, can't, no, as, no. as the saying goes, you can't polish a turd. Absolutely. You can roll it in glitter, but that's about it. I think the, <laughs> the <laughs> one of the things that Steve Jones taught me um, very early on was, was the power of lo-fi content. Yes. You know, he would he would use his iPhone and he would just, you know, record them you know, the guys messing about doing the sound check and that sort of stuff and post that and and be so quite intimate with the fan. You know, have a look at what we're doing here and you know that and that got more engagement than the if you like the crafted posts. Yes. Um, because it was real and people could, uh, could could associate with them and see them sort of behind the scenes. It's like a, you know, backstage pass. Yeah. And, and, and they felt as if they were invited in. And, and you know, we, we find that that really works. So you, you need a, a mixture of, you know, well-produced music and well-produced video, but you also need quite a lot of lo-fi stuff in between, which is really easy to do. 
and it, it just keeps that engagement going. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think there's a lot of bands that have made that part of their brand. Uh, Wolfpack, I think, being one of them. Yeah. Uh, early on, they just did produce a lot of lo-fi. I think they have a bigger budget now and they're able to do more. But <laughs> originally, it was a lot of lo-fi content. Yeah, no, that's right. But yeah. I mean, the other thing that we've, um, you know, we've been introducing in, in, the, in, in the product are things like what we call hype links. It's a bit like a link fire. Um, you know, so that you can tell people uh, that uh, you're, you, you've distributed music to, to, to the various platforms and, you know, you can post that into your stream. Um, you can do pre-saves so that automatically your fans get your track you know, onto their playlist the day it's released. So, you, you know, that helps you get more streams and so on. So there's, there's a lots of sort of tricks and, and tools in there that... Uh, you know, people don't often think about or don't necessarily know about when they're starting out that will help them along the way. That's amazing. Well, we're going to transition into another section of the interview, but I really love everything you shared. And, and I think musicians should certainly check out BeatChain, even if just they sign up, connect their accounts and see what we're talking about. I think, I think it's worth it. So what's the greatest challenge you've overcome? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been many challenges in, in, in my in my career. Um, I imagine. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I've had I've had challenges. I had a health challenge uh, when I was forty. Uh, I had a heart attack. So, wow. and that's just from working too hard. Um, yeah. But um, and and that changes your life. You know, um, you, you need to sort of reflect and and and, and think about doing things differently. Um, but I, I think the I think the greatest challenge it was also the greatest victory in a way, if that was another one of your questions. Um, yes. Uh, which was becoming, ex- you know, being a small company and, you know, both, you know, MDSL, which ended up with, you know, has now got 800 people in offices all over the world, um, is is one thing. But it started off with with me sort of writing code in, in, in the kitchen and and having to go out there and, and and be the salesman and the janitor and everything else you need to be when you're you want to create your own company um, i'm familiar with that part yeah yeah i'm sure you are so you know getting accepted and, and winning business from sort of major enterprises i think was was it was a great feeling you know sort of uh, we were lucky enough um to to sell to you know all the major financial institutions, I'm talking the you know the Goldman Sachs's and and, uh, and Barclays and and you know Merrill's and UBS and all all the all the all the big guys, Bank of America. Um, yes. So we, we we did all that because we started in the financial sector, but then uh, you know when we when, as we moved our tech and our services into sort of a more general uh, other sectors, you know winning. Winning some of those big accounts like Facebook and um, uh, and uh, Apple and these sorts of guys, you know they 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 were they were they were great moments in in the career. Thanks for sharing that. And are there any books or other resources that have helped you on your journey? Oh, sure, so many. Hmm. Um, I'm a great uh, you know I'm a great reader of um, behavioral economics actually. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and, and there's a guy called Dan Ariely who has done some great TED Talks and has written some great books. And I think one of his early books was called uh, Predictably, Predictably Irrational. And it's all about how people behave in, in, in their sort of daily life and make irrational decisions. Um, and it talks about sort of what they, what, what they refer to sort of overall as, as behavioral economics. So the fact that if you... If, if, if you've just bought something um, and you now own it, uh, you have what they call endowment effects. So, so let's say you've just bought a, a, a new coffee mug uh, and it costs you $10 and you really like this coffee mug. If I came to you and said, okay, I'll give you $10 for that coffee mug, you now don't want to sell it to me because you've actually – uh, you've, you've actually got endowment, but you, you've, you, you've attached yourself to it. 
is something that you, you, that you like and you'd want more than ten dollars to send it sell it back to me so but 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 understanding things like how you should lay out menus as to how people look at menus how choices are made when um, people are making buying decisions is has always been you know a fascination of mine so those are the sorts of things i really like. Yeah, that is pretty fascinating. You know, I'm a big listener of the James Altucher podcast. So if he was ever on that show, there's a good chance I've heard a lot about this kind of stuff. And uh, I just keep that on rotation so I can always uh, tap into knowledge and experience and and things I, I might not otherwise discover for myself. So it's very fascinating stuff. Thanks for so much for your time and generosity, Ben. Is there anything else I should have touched on? No, not at all. I think it's it's fantastic. I, I really like uh, you know the work you're doing. I had a look at your website too, um, yeah, Music Entrepreneur HQ, and, mm-hmm. and and yeah, as I said, I think we have many shared ideals. I mean, we, we are, do. We are here to try and provide education and a tool set. So there's you know there's a lot of synergies in terms of what we're doing um, for yes. musicians to help them, you know, have less or fewer missteps you know if we've already fallen down those holes there's you know we should be able to say people look out there's a hole there don't fall down it. and 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 you know if we can give people the tools that really give them as much chance of being successful as they can then that's a great thing and that's what we're trying to do absolutely and i think this has given me the inspiration to i mean i already think of myself as a curator but even more so now that tools like this are becoming available it's going to be more and more a thing of sending people in the right direction and it'll continue to help them find the right mindset and and marketing tips and all that too but it's it's amazing you know it makes my work even more efficient when i can just send people to amazing tools and then they can go wow that was my breakthrough for today and tomorrow what's i don't know maybe i can find another breakthrough okay well, th- well thank you so much and, and all right and, you know watch this space there's more coming i will thank you so much okay. all right let's talk key takeaways from this interview number one i love what ben shared about coming up with a new interesting innovative ways of building an audience growing engagement and creating revenue streams you just never know what's going to happen and recently we had the pandemic if you want to future proof your career or business then you've always got to be thinking ahead and coming up with new ways of doing things and some businesses have thrived and some businesses have had to shut down and it's unfortunate and these are very difficult times but sometimes there is a way forward and it's just a matter of identifying what that is number two you might be able to promote your music better than a label can or possibly even your team the downside is that it might come at a cost which is primarily your time. If all your time is spent marketing your music to get it out to the people who want to hear it, then you have no time for your creativity, or at least very little for it. So you can't constantly be releasing new music. If that cycle continues, unfortunately, at some point you're going to experience a drop-off in your audience because they haven't heard anything new from you in a while. The key point is that we need to find a balance, and that might be a matter of hiring someone once you've figured out your processes. It might be a matter of leveraging tools like BeatChain to make your life far more efficient and keep your costs minimal. Number three, no matter how great your marketing assets are, if no one knows who you are, you're not going to make an impact. Ben shared that a lot of bands will make a new album and it's shiny and it's beautiful and it's amazing, and yet nobody watches it. And the artist is left wondering why that is. Well, if you haven't heard this before, really the number one way to promote your brand new video on YouTube is to get as many eyeballs as you possibly can in the first 24 hours. Honestly, that's probably the number one thing. And the distant number two is to keep people's attention for longer. So get them to watch the entire video if possible. And if not, then as long as possible. And so this sounds like a pretty massive undertaking if you don't have a following. But if you do have a following and you're able to text them, you're able to email them, you're able to notify them on social media or have other ways of reaching out to them in the first 24 hours, 
that's really gonna boost your YouTube video big time. Now it's time for news and updates. Now today I'm just gonna roll the news and updates and call to action into one segment. If you aren't already on the email list, go to musicentrepreneurhq.com slash join, J-O-I-N, now. My new program is coming and I'm gonna be opening the doors to it very soon. Now I asked what you wanted and over the years I listened and I found a way to bundle up everything you've ever asked me for and more, which includes talent management. Now, I've already said too much, but the only way you're going to get to access to it and learn about it is if you've purchased the Music Entrepreneur Code or if you're on my email list. You can take your pick, but I would suggest heading on over to musicentrepreneurhq.com slash join, sign up to receive email updates, whitelist my email address, and keep a close eye on your inbox over the course of the next couple of weeks. Now it's time for listener comments. You know, there's really nothing worth mentioning this week. I do get emails and messages all the time, but occasionally it does happen that there isn't anything worth sharing. But here's an important reminder. I don't work unless I'm paid up front. I think some people contact me thinking I'm going to invest in them. And that's just not the case, especially if I don't know who you are. and We don't have a relationship. I'm not just going to be sending money your way or wire transferring you or anything like that. I get those randoms across every social media site, sexually frustrated women included. And while it's nice to hear from you, if it's not a product you can find on the website, I probably don't offer it, at least not yet. But like I said, I put something together based on your feedback, and I think you're going to love it. So just hang in there while we put this together for you. And if you want to be featured on the podcast, make sure to leave a rating and review for the podcast on iTunes. It does help us get it out to more people who want it. If you're interested in getting in touch with me, I still recommend Twitter. I don't know why you're contacting me on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Discord, blah, blah, blah. The best place and the most convenient and fastest way to get in touch with me is on Twitter at David A. Weeb. W-I-E-B-E. I'm David Andrew Weeb, and I look forward to seeing you on the stages of the world. Thank you for listening. Music in this episode was brought to you by Brian Young. Wherever you're listening to this right now, please consider leaving a five-star review and comment to help us get the word out about the podcast.